for mobile devices. So mobile devices itself are quite quite unique and uh, and have brings own challenges. And then a uh, little bit about software and um, how to keep the system running and up to date. So the maintenance and I will show some layouts as well at the end of the presentation. How the devices can be set up. And mainly I'll be the, uh, in Bitbar, uh, we focused on application testing. So uh, mobile application testing and how people are uh, uh, the running running those uh, tests on, on the real devices. And I will try to point uh, the main challenges to setting up this kind of device labs. Uh, generally, uh, I would say that uh, it has similar challenges as setting up the, the, the server hosting. So, uh, because in order to be in, provide uh, testing solution for the mobile devices, you will, of course have to have a similar servers there, routers, switches, uh, network setups and so on. So it's quite the same. So you, you need to have some secure, uh, stable environment where you have the devices, good network connections, power and cooling. And of course the mobile devices has their own challenges there because you have a Wi-Fi access point, USB hubs, and sometimes problematic devices with the batteries and so on. So the first, I, I think this is the main challenge is to find a good space. So uh, in order to provide you to, uh, to, to set up the device in, in that way that you can phys physically access those. And that, uh, that, uh, for that, you need to have some kind of space. Of course, you can use the like office uh, tables or where you can lay out the devices, but uh, in the long run, it's not uh, it's not very professional, and you want to keep the keep keep the same uh, stability and availability as for the normal normal uh, software and the servers that those would be accessible all the time. And then, of course, uh, because you normally with the mobile devices you have cables going from the device to the host. And sometimes you have to unplug the plug it the devices. That uh, that gives uh, some challenges there as well. So the uh, the main challenge is to find a good place, secure place where you can keep the devices and allows you to do the different kind of layouts there. Uh, the cooling uh, this is of course important for the normal servers as well, but it's uh, it's a, it's a huge thing with the mobile devices. So uh, in order to keep the devices up and running, you have to have it probably cooled. And there's one uh, picture in the background, uh, what happens when you have the device uh, overcharged. So it, yeah, you will see this kind of uh, swollen batteries. Um, nowadays, um, most of the devices, you cannot easily replace it. So it makes it, uh, makes it a little bit harder. All the devices were easy. You could just replace the battery and it's good to go. And the heat itself, it's not good for the, for the device. So the battery is not, uh, is the one thing, but also the GPU, um, if a uh, device get too hot, normally what happens, uh, the operating system automatically lowers the frequency. So uh, it will mean that it, it's going to somehow affect your application and your testing, testing as well. So, you have to make sure that, that the cooling is uh, probably handled there. And of course, in, in the long, long term, the, it, it's going to affect the devices. So um, what we have seen, uh, some devices can last anywhere from the, from the six months up to the six years. Um, there, there's actually quite uh, interesting, interesting stuff there that how some some manufacturer devices are working much, much better, even though that the environment is pretty much the same and the same amount, the same amount of the test has been executed on those. Then the network connection. So uh, mobile devices, at least in our environment, most of the time those we use the Wi-Fi. So uh, that uh, you have to have a proper uh, Wi-Fi environment there. And that's, that's related to space as well. Uh, in typical office, you have a, 
a lot of different Wi-Fi networks around and that's gonna add some noise there and that's gonna affect your mobile device uh, Wi-Fi connection as well. So find it a good space where the less less uh, noise is, uh, is, is quite challenged. And of course, uh, with the mobile devices, you can you can use the like reverse USB tethering. So the Wi-Fi is not only option, but it's most commonly used. Then the power. So all of these devices are battery powered, but uh, needs to be getting charged. And um, you have to take account the power in many ways. So not just for the mobile devices, but of course, the, all, the, all the intra. So when you have the servers there, you have the switches, uh, PC, Max, whatever you are using the device as a device host, and all the network equipment, uh, you need to have those powered. So generally, uh, any kind of like a hosting, real hosting center environment are the best, but of course it's not uh, possible for, for everybody to, to set it up there because it's a, it's a big investment uh, to, to, to get the devices set up the hosting center. Then uh, about the hardware side. So one of the unique things with uh, with mobile devices are these USB hubs. So the USB hubs allows you to connect multiple devices to the one device host. And there is a, there's a lot of different kind of uh, USB hubs available. Um, some good, very good, like industrial grade uh, USB hubs. On the picture you can see on the right side, there's this white uh, Cambryonix uh, USB hubs, which are, which are, are very nice. So they provide their own command line tools to control the each of the ports, uh, even control the power. And it, it gives you the full full control of the each of the each of the port, and that way the, the device is help as well. But there's uh, there's all, also of course other other providers, the cheaper ones, uh, which functions decently. So the main thing is to take account that you have uh, you the charger with, which will provide power for the USB hub as uh, enough. Uh, just give enough the batch to, to, to power up your devices. So typically on these seven port hubs, what you see here, few, uh, those comes with the 60, uh, the 30, 36 watt uh, uh, charger. And USB 3 uh, specifies that minimum uh, uh, ampere for, for each port to be 900 milliampers. So that comes roughly, if you have a seven port and five volts, that comes to roughly seven, uh, 32, 32 watts. So 36 watts amp amper charger should be, should be good for, for that purpose. So that's, a, what, that's a one thing to take account of when, uh, when picking up these uh, device, device hubs and, and it needs to be uh, for the charging and as well as, as, well as for the data. And the other thing with the hubs is that how the, the ports are arranged, that which way those are pointing, as it uh, sideways or, the, or from the top. So that affects that how you can, which way the cables goes out and how you can lay out those. And for, even for the normal hubs, uh, there's pretty nice uh, open source uh, software available. Uh, you can find it from the, from the GitHub called Oop Control. So that allows you to control USB hub ports. Well, quite many uh, USB chipsets are supported by this tool. So it's a nice, nice and handy tool. So uh, it allows you to see the status of the ports and as well as to switch those on and off. And sometimes those helps to bring the device uh, back. So sometimes devices might lose the USB connections. And of course, the last thing about related to the hubs is the, is the cables. So uh, normally the iOS devices, uh, 
the, the, the original cable is the best choice. So uh, it's, a, it's a durable, it's, uh, it, 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 it works, it simply works. On Android side, the USB-C cables and, and the standard USB cables, which comes with the device, uh, we haven't had very good uh, experience with those. So we normally look for, for some uh, something a little bit more sturdier. Um, Anker, they, they provide the pretty nice, pretty nice cables. And there's also other other ones, but it, it's one thing to take account. So uh, uh, the cable should be solid as well. Then uh, you have the USB hub, and then then you have some kind of device host there. Are uh, you running the PCs or the Raspberries or, or the Macs or whatever uh, where the where the USB hub is connected, or that you can of course connect. Uh, mobile device directly to the host. And what this host allows you to do is, um, it allows to control and access the device. So over the USB or the or through the, the, the Wi-Fi. So in case of the Android devices, you can use the ADP over Wi-Fi. And iOS side, you can use the iTunes 5 sync. So basically from the Xcode, you can connect to the, to the device wireless as well, but uh, I would always prefer the wired connection. It's, it's, it's much more stable. And if you need to reboot, what, what you should every now and then do uh, is to reboot the device, you might lose the wireless, uh, wireless connection there. So the wired, wired will be always there available. And then uh, you can, from there, you can switch off uh, the wired connection and go to the Wi-Fi connection only. <laughs> but uh, also on the Android side, uh, if you have a rooted phone, it allows you to keep uh, ADP over the Wi-Fi permanently. So that uh, that's option as well. Uh, the main thing I would say that uh, running the ADP over Wi-Fi allows you to do, uh, if, if you do some kind of battery testing. So you want to you want to check that how how your application is using the battery and and um, measure it. So when you turn off the wired connection, that provides you the uh, that capability. Okay. Um, at the next uh, about the network connection. So uh, all of these mobile devices have a Wi-Fi chipset, so you can you can connect uh, connect to the to the Wi-Fi. And nowadays, most of the devices are supporting uh, five gigahertz frequency, which is uh, much wider and much better connection compared to the two point four gigahertz. So I remember the like early days. Um, uh, the device it only had a 2.4 gigahertz, and we, we used to have uh, quite much more challenges with the setting up the Wi-Fi. And uh, but now having the 5G uh, supported, uh, it has made made that part of the hosting much more easier. And um, but still, it's. Uh, it is challenged though. So whatever you pick up as your Wi-Fi uh, access point providers, make sure that uh, you can you can configure uh, the channels, bandwidth, signal strength uh, from the from from the Wi-Fi access point. So typically, uh, setting the Wi-Fi signal strength. To the minimum is the best option uh, as long as you have the access points relatively close to the devices. So keeping it the minimum, it is it, gonna generate less less noise there. And increasing the signal strength, it, it doesn't really do it uh, make it any better. So it just uh, generates more more noise there. And of course, if, when when you're building up the bigger and bigger device, device labs, you have more and more traffic there flowing around, so keep the signal strength in minimum is the best option. 
And for the wired um, connection, yeah, you can you can you can use that one as well. Uh, so there is some uh, tools and the software uh, what you can install on your device and provide kind of like reverse USB tethering. So that would mean that uh, uh, you can basically turn off the Wi-Fi from your device and route, route the traffic uh, through the USB to your device host. And from there, uh, you can then uh, uh, access uh, through the wired connection. And it's, uh, I would say it's, a, it, 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 it's the most stable, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's more challenging to set it up. So um, Wi-Fi on that base is much easier to set it up. But uh, when you, if you do the like wired connection, that, that maybe makes your, if you have to control the network. So if you do some network traffic shaping or the throttling or things like that, uh, you could do it on the host device host side directly. And uh, that would make it, uh, make it much, much easier. Okay, and then uh, besides the network connection, there there's also other external hardware uh, sometimes required in order to do the, the testing. So uh, so there can be Bluetooth devices, uh, then some external USB devices. You might have some uh, devices in your same uh, Wi-Fi or network, uh, like a Chromecast and and Roku devices or the AirPlay, so those are the things that uh, which, uh, which put, if you if you need to dis test this kind of uh, uh, external hardware, uh, you need to take that account when you design your network, so that uh, devices are able to see those other other external hardware as well. And it's not necessarily. It's not like camera itself, it's in you know, a phone, but uh, uh, you sometimes the tests uh, you need to have in your application, you, you want to access the camera and what the camera sees, it's uh, you may, may be scanning something there. So trying to see uh, some patterns or you're testing your uh, application to taking photos and you want, you want to validate that camera interface works. So. That's one point that I have, uh, we have done, done some setups for those as well. So basically camera pointing, the device camera pointing on certain uh, monitor, for example, what we can then externally uh, control. And uh, during the test, test session, you can change the image on the monitor and that way the, uh, the application in your phone will see it and uh, can test the different, different kind of scenarios. And, uh, and quite often, a uh, lot of uh, lot of uh, application which, if you have some kind of payment system there, you it allows you to, con uh, to take a picture of your credit card and read the information there. So that's something what you can do also with the monitoring. So mo moni excellent monitor where you where you see so those images. And then uh, uh, we have had some customers uh, who had had some. Uh, interesting interesting scenario so they have been trying to test uh, the device device movement so the motion sensors and and uh, and uh, and uh, how the device is uh, uh, positioned so we we have built up some uh, external hardware there which which they can then control and turn the device and Kind of like related to aug augmented reality, uh, so uh, there's uh, there's interesting use cases there. But those are th th those are normally provided by by already the libraries what you use from the operating system. Um, yeah, device charging, so. Uh, in order to keep these devices up and running, um, you have to have it in somehow to get the power there. And uh, how these device charging, it, how it will affect the battery life. 
some of the phones uh, doesn't control the battery charging very well, so it gets overcharged. And that's, that causes issues like this, like if the phones become split and maybe it could even the swollen batteries can press the uh, USB uh, connection and that, that becomes flaky. But what normally helps is to provide the proper cooling there. So, uh, so having the environment if there is enough cool. And of course, um, when you run your application and, and test, test the application there on a the device, uh, most likely the CPU <coughs> will run a higher, higher frequency. So between the test runs, it's good to allow the device to cool down a little bit. So uh, you can measure uh, the battery temperature directly uh, and to basically to route the ADP and see that how how hot is running and if you need to cool it down before the next execution test execution that's always option. Yeah, and uh, the, nowadays uh, most of the batteries it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, so. Uh, you have to be able to pop up the back screen open or the front uh, to remove the screen in order to access the device and then unscrew it from the frame and unconnect the connectors and that way change the battery. Most of the time it's doable, but it definitely takes time and, and make it right. So um, that's something uh, what you will see when, when you run devices, uh, connected to USB for a long time and the charging for a long time. And the one thing about uh, device charging is also that uh, um, the operating system is able to detect that there's uh, the device is, uh, has full battery or is it getting charged. So it, uh, it, uh, it can run the CPU in a higher frequency. So that might be something what for example, if we do the performance testing, uh, it, it uh, provides interesting, interesting values there. So uh, when when the charging is uh, when the charger is connected, the device is able to run faster, and so it looks like your application works faster. But then you then you disconnect the charger, and and CPU frequency might go down and and also when, when you are running out of the battery, it's operating system is controlling that, that as well. <clears throat> okay, um, that's, uh, that's roughly about the, the, the hardware side of the things, uh, what we have there in the, in a mobile device lab. Uh, one thing what uh, I didn't mention er earlier, but um, having the, these power cooling space Wi-Fi network connection resolved out. Uh, most likely you will need the physical access there uh, on that device lab. Uh, it depends on the devices, of course, but uh, like we in our hosting centers, we have a thousand foot phones. So we, we also have a people who, who are taking care of those. So these are consumer class devices. So do not expect same kind of stability what you can expect from the from the normal servers. So uh, iOS devices, iPhones, iPads, for my opinion, are, are, are very very much more stable than any of the Android Android devices from any manufacturers. We have been some cases running the, the iOS devices without interruptions for years, uh, where some Android devices, you you need daily to do something for those to keep it, keep it alive. Okay, uh, next I have a, some general things about the software side. So you need to have a software to control the device. So uh, the same way uh, as you want your server to be 
servers to be controlled and, and monitored. Um, you need to have uh, software to control these mobile devices. And also you need software to, to get notif notified if, if there's any issues with the hardware and you can then disable the device and then trigger to somebody to go and go and check it physically and see what's going on there. You can of course run the, uh, the monitoring on the device side as well. Um, so it will report back if, the, if, uh, if there's some issues on the devices. But uh, you should take account that it's, it's going to, of course, affect to the per device performance as well. So any additional uh, applications, what you have there beside your own, it's going uh, to affect with the device performance. On the Android side, uh, ADP has been there forever and pretty much uh, remained the same. Uh, you can use the very old ADP version with still with the new, newer phone. So that has been a great solution. Uh, it, it, it simply works. It allows you to reboot the device, access the file system, you can have a shell access there. Uh, you can get the device properties and uninstall applications and, and packages there. On iOS side, there's a nice uh, open source library, Libby Mobile Device, which provides similar similar functionalities. So it allows you to do, see that what the other applications installed there and uh, do the reports, install new applications, things like that. Uh, it's not as uh, I would say that like AD, ADP provides you more options, but uh, the by mobile device is, uh, is definitely definitely good one. Uh, the only thing to take account that you have to keep that uh, uh, normally up to date. So ADP, you can run it forever, uh, even the older versions and pretty much work with, uh, with the newer, newer uh, Android versions as well. But uh, by mobile devices, you should keep it uh, up to date to support the latest uh, latest iOS versions as well. And then uh, um, some kind of remote access uh, into the device is nice, so you can you can you can control it uh, with the jailbroken or the router phones. You can uh, you can you can install. Uh, uh, for example, the PNC server there, so that provides you a nice, uh, nice interface to the device screen itself, so you can fully control it through that one. Um, on uh, Android side, you can you can also access directly to the screen buffer and get it uh, get it from there and and, and uh, convert it to the images and and send it over the network. Uh, Similar thing on the iOS side, you can use the Apple own uh, libraries to to access the device device screen. And then once you have the device screen available, uh, you have to uh, in order to control you you need to be able to send the keys and the clicks to the devices. The same thing uh, with the Android side, it's uh, reasonably easy easy to do uh, using the ADP or some uh, instrumentation packages running in the device side. Uh, iOS side, it's a, it's a little bit more trickier, but it's, it's, it's doable as well. Uh, it definitely helped uh, when the XE UI test framework came came in into iOS side, so that allows you to control control the screen much better. Yeah, so the software side, uh, well, the, the the battery testing or the basically you, are, you, you want to measure the, your application performance and how it uses the battery. Um, the trick there is that how you can uh, how you can keep the device connected uh, to the USB, so being able to control it, and but uh, but not to charge it out of time. 
because if you charge the phone uh, when you when you run these battery performance testing, uh, you don't get the like real values there. So uh, switching to the to the Wi-Fi mode on that case is the one option. So you can disable the USB port over there uh, and then use the Wi-Fi to to control the device and that way you will get much more realistic uh, battery usage uh, performance numbers. And the performance testing, as I mentioned earlier, so uh, so uh, having device connected to the to the to the with the USB cable and the charging, it's uh, normally it uh, it, it allows uh, device itself to run in higher higher CPU because it doesn't have to care about that how much uh, how much power is using because it's constantly being charged. But uh, when you run the performance testing you will see that CPU is running higher frequency and that uh, that means that the device is getting hotter and hotter. So at some point, the operating system might decide that it will lower the frequency. And that will, that will also affect your numbers as well. So when it, the CPU runs slower speed, your application is uh, performing uh, not so well anymore. So that's something to take account. But, uh, it's a good thing that uh, whenever doing the testing, so to try to limit it in a certain time, so uh, in, in order to get uh, get to this kind of uh, situations over, so let the device to cool down enough before before the performance testing is started. Then uh, uh, network capture, yeah, this is uh, this is definitely something uh, what is what, what is very useful <coughs> to have there uh, from your application. So you can see that uh, how much uh, bandwidth your application is using. You can uh, capture the network traffic and do the traffic shaping, for example. You can uh, you can create uh, of course the standard HTTP proxies there and set it up on your on your Wi-Fi settings so that all the traffic goes through the pro through the proxies and uh, in order to decode the traffic uh, you can install uh, the there is good good amount of open source proxies which will uh, allow you to do the uh, traffic. Uh, decoding and encoding. So the, the main requirement is there that you have to install the root certificate from the proxy to the device. So when uh, the traffic is encoded using that certificate, then the proxy can decode it. And you can see the plain text traffic there that helps you to, helps you to um, capture and later the monitor the monitor the traffic there better. So yeah, that's uh, that's a general about software. So there's uh, plenty of software. I think the uh, the hard ways are is more challenging. Uh, software is uh, is um, especially nowadays much more stable and much more tools available than it what it used to be. Okay, the, the maintenance part itself. So, uh, how we keep the systems up to date? Uh, device always, always updates. So, for Android and iOS side, uh, you normally have a major release every year, and then uh, then you have these smaller releases. And you want to control when the device always is getting up to date, updated. So, uh, you don't want any 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 updates going on when when you are actually testing your application so it would not uh, otherwise it will create some pop-ups and maybe reboots and things like that so uh, you have to be able to control when it's up updated so uh, 
you can you can block uh, the network level those update sites, and that helps you to keep the keep the devices uh, in the same OS and, and without any notification or pop-ups. And you have this host OS where the device is connected that needs to be kept up to date as well. So uh, you can use any of the provisioning tools, Ansible, Papa, Chefs, whatever your, uh, what you use there. Keep the, all the services up to date, um, including like Xcode version, GPI mobile devices, ADP, Android SDKs, things like that, what you run on the host. And as, as like VMs, virtual machines, containers are the great, great tools there. So that allows you to set up set up the new container or the VM and easily switch between the different versions between the tests. So uh, you don't uh, change host so much that uh, it would affect the test because you have everything in the container or the VM and uh, that allows much more smoother, smoother uh, updates as well. Yeah, and as we have these uh, <coughs> mobile devices, these uh, consumer class devices, and, and you need to every now and then, of course, replace those, repair it. Uh, the, the replacing the batteries uh, is the one example. Uh, there's also other components what can what can be what can be replaced, but uh, that's all related to how how you set up the devices that you have a good uh, access to devices you can, so you can pull it out from the from the stack and and um, put the replacement in or the replace the one oh it's a good to have uh, some replacement batteries around as well as uh, replacement devices as well so it allows you to faster to move to the next one then the monitoring side yeah um, so you need to mo monitor the whole, whole whole system, whole intra, including of course the, the Wi-Fi, uh, the devices itself, the servers, networks. Um, so anything anything there, what, what you are running should be should be monitored, and uh, and same way as the normal servers. <coughs> Yeah, okay, I already mentioned these automation tools. So these are mainly used for the provisioning, uh, the server host. Um, you can, you, you also have a tools to do the setup for the devices, um, like initial setup, set, setups. So on the iOS side, you have the Apple configurator tool, what uh, allows you to create uh, new profiles where you, where you have a predefined, for example, Wi-Fi network settings, uh, accounts, things like that. So that makes the setting up the new device, or if you have to reset the device, uh, much more faster to bring it back back to life when you have these automated scripts uh, to provision new devices. And then uh, <clears throat> one thing what probably at some point affects uh, your application and, and the test what are testing your application are these notifications and pop-ups which can, can come up at any time. So uh, there's uh, like, for, for example, here lately has been a lot of Amber alert and emergency alert. So those are the ones what you should disable from the settings. Um, any kind of uh, application updates from the Play Store, App Store, those who you should disable so it doesn't uh, affect your test execution. And about the expansion, or if you want to, once you have the space for the devices and the lab, uh, they, I would say that there's not 
enough space forever. Like there's always always need some something new. So uh, that should be something what you think about ahead. Like uh, even though if you if you start with a small setup, uh, you should be ready to that. Uh, it can be it can grow bigger, and that's gonna also affect to that where you can host it. Do you have a people to take care of it and and, and things like that? And beta releases. Um, this is something what at least us uh, we, are, we are getting a lot of requests. So uh, developers and testers they want to access these early access to these beta releases, so they can um, see how the APIs inside of the operating system, what kind of operating systems uh, features has been added, and of course that ensure that your application works when the new OS version is published and, and comes available for, for publicly. So you want to have a, some kind of plan for this as well. Um, it gives the own challenges because uh, these beta releases might not have the uh, same stability or the tool support either. So. Uh, it, uh, it actually requires quite a lot of work to keep, uh, keep up to date with these, these versions. Um, I have a few, few slides here left just to show uh, some kind of uh, layouts what you could uh, what you could use and how you can put those uh, devices in your server racks or the table or wherever you keep the devices. Uh, the one, one, uh, one thing is that how much you need to have a, like a visibility for the devices. So then if you, if you need to have a good access so you can see the screen, so make sure that your, the layouts will match with that. And of course, the layout depends on your space. So how much space you have available, how many devices you have. Do you have to just do a, in your in your test? Do you have to be able to access the camera? And does it have to point to that direction? Then, of course, the physical access, like how you can uh, how you can uh, remove the device or the unplug and plug the USB device. And then uh, the, if it's like open office, do you need to secure the devices somehow? Do you have to have some server rack that they can lock the devices so nobody comes and pick it up for the manual testing, for example. So yeah, there's a few, few different kind of uh, ways how you can put the devices. There's unlimited amount of it. Just make sure that it, uh, however you lay it out, you are able to provide proper cooling, cooling there, and at least some kind of decent access for the cables. And do some labeling so you can find the right device. Yeah, there's a, there's another set with some USB chargers, tablets. How you can how you can lay it out those. And the one thing about uh, like over here is we have a standard uh, uh, rack shelf. Uh, these are normally um, made out of the steel. So if you stack up stack up these lot of these, it's gonna definitely affect your Wi-Fi because it start bouncing around there. But yeah, it's uh, it always has to measure that uh, when setting up that all the all the connections is the wired or wireless will work probably and then if you have this kind of tight setup uh, if you have to pull out the server self uh, from the rack uh, make sure that it, it's not gonna cut any wires or affect any 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 connections there that's that's pretty much the the slide set what i had here uh, I think we have a 10 minutes left. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer.
Happy to answer. That's yourself. awesome, Sakari. Really uh, thorough. Lots of uh, lots of great stuff there. Yeah, does anybody have any questions for Sakari? Uh, hi, yeah, uh, great talk. Thank you. Um, I'm curious about the the network throttling that you're implementing. Do you know is it that done at like packet level? Do you know the software that you're using for that, or, or is it built into hardware? Well. Um... We have been using several, so um, MIT and Proxy is the one of the open source ones. Very nice, uh, uh, very nice tool. Uh, you can you can Google it out. MIT and Proxy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we, we use that as well. Yeah, it's uh, we have liked it so far. It has uh, allows you to do hard captures, uh, do the different kind of uh, things over there. Of course, there's like a Salus Proxy is one of those. Um, we have some uh, self-made also software what we use in the different environments to do it the, the, on the on the bigger scale. Uh, we have been using this MIT proxy. It's a bit more smaller scale. We are actually currently building up the quite nice uh, tunneling slash proxy solution there in uh, in our hosting centers, which will provide the much more larger, larger scale uh, connections and uh, allows us to do the traffic shaping as well as the routing. So being able to access from the device on your own laptop. So create the tunnels between the, between the device so you can access the local local content uh, from, from the device. There's plenty of uh, solutions available. Um, VPN, uh, this, uh, this is used for the USB tethering. There's also some 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 solutions. So you create create basic tunnel between uh, the mobile device back to your host using the VPN VPN server and client stuff. But generally, uh, when you if you have to do the encoding and decoding of the traffic there on your proxy, so you have to have that uh, root certificate installed. That's that's something normally what is kind of like manual step there. Uh, luckily, it's only only once. And sometimes on some time, phones it forces you to set up the bin code or the password in order to use these user certificates. But um, it um, at least the, the the latest Android versions uh, you can set the password or the pin code once and then remove it and it still keeps the user certificates there so that that helps okay great thank you I'm, I'm curious how many devices you host in the lab Sakari in total roughly we have a we have a Three hosting centers, uh, one in Europe, two in here in US. Uh, we have several thousands. Then have then we have a uh, hosting centers where where where's our customer uh, are hosting their devices, and we basically manage the lab for them. And that's uh, that's probably another another thousand there plus. So we are providing this kind of. Uh, on-premise solutions as well, where we will provide uh, software to to maintain uh, the devices and control the devices, as well as we do the do the do the setups for them. So, getting the server racks and uh, and setting up the layouts. Some people they want to. We have even built this kind of uh, isolated environment. So, sometimes the Customers needs to control that uh, there is fully, fully like a Faraday cage type of setup. So we, we have built uh, that kind of server racks as well to control the Wi-Fi. So co control the Wi-Fi better. But yeah, bunch of devices and uh, new device models are coming out every day. Uh, so, uh, but it's definitely like. I have been doing this about 10 years now. Uh, devices are getting much more stable, for sure. And the Wi-Fi wi uh, issues, what we used to have earlier, those are, those are 
those are pretty much gone now because the 5G frequency there. But still, it's uh, it's uh, it's a certain manufacturers on the Android side. They 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 like to install some bloatware on those phones, and uh, it causes its own challenges there, uh, which will then affect the to the application testing. Generally, I would say that the iOS devices are are, are much easier. So even though that the tool side, um, it you you need to work more. So you cannot just use the ADP for everything, but um, there, there's more work on the iOS side. But the device, like hardware quality, is uh, I would say much much better. We we haven't really seen any battery issues with the iOS side almost at all, where on the Android side, it's uh, pretty normal. Of all of the challenges that you see with the devices, um, like the notifications, the battery swelling, um, what would you, what, what to you is the most frustrating uh, that if you could, you would eliminate from being a problem? Um, I think the, 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 there's uh, unknown issues almost weekly, like some, something new. Um, the, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, troubleshooting, debugging. Uh, in our case, um, we support many, many, the, many test frameworks on uh, Appium, XEUI test, XE test, Espresso, Android instrumentation. Those are, those are actually giving, giving us quite a lot of challenges. Even though like you can get the, you can get the hardware side working pretty much, uh, pretty much stable, but um, all the test frameworks, all the changes in the OS, the tools, uh, those keeps you busy every day. And uh, it could be, always success for our customers to get the redundancy. So don't just pick the one device model type, one, one device instance for each, but uh, get at least two or even more uh, to similar kind of the devices. So, because yeah, these are, these are consumer class devices which can have any kind of issues. And if your, if your system is uh, probably hooked up with the, continuous integration, continuous deployment systems where you want to test your application after they each commit, it's, uh, it's important to have a stable environment there. So you have the devices available and being, being probably tested. But at the same time, like, uh, of course, uh, you can use the emulators and simulators on a certain level, but um, still the, anything related to the real, real devices including the batteries, the performances, how it changes. Those, those you can really test as well on, on simulated or the emulated environment. And yeah, you I, mentioned how much, you mentioned how much more stable everything is now from, from where it was five or, or 10 years ago. I'm, I'm, is there anything that you know of that's um, on the horizon? Um, that uh, you're particularly excited about that will improve stability even further? Um, I think the, uh, the having the USB-C, uh, uh, the d devices nowadays have the most USB-C, it has, uh, I think the connection-wise, it has been a better, uh, I don't know if it's about the cables or actually the connectors, but uh, USB-C has been working, working much better. And that's something uh, what has been affected the Android devices. iOS been using the light, lighting adapters, lighting cables, those has been uh, always good. Just have to use the genuine Apple products there. But for the future, I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, every year there's new major always release coming from the boat on the Google and the Apple. So uh, it always provides some kind of surprises there. On the device hardware side, 
Um, I don't know what what can be any more done. These these are getting enough small small the devices and uh, well, what could be what could be different here. Um, maybe someday they will drop the wired connection totally. Use the uh, wireless charging as well. So that that would mean that everything needs to go through the Wi-Fi networks. So that's something what might change in the future. Nice. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, thank you again, Sakari, uh, for your talk. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, take care and uh, and look out for another event hopefully scheduled soon. Thanks, Sakari. Thank you so much. Sakari. Thank you.